In Singapore, less than a tenth of women sit on company boards, even though women make up half of the population and account for more than half of university graduates. Lynette Lim takes a look at what's being done about the imbalance. As CEO of Capital Commercial Trust Management, Lynette Leong is a rose among the thorns in an industry that's male-dominated. It's something she's used to. When she was an undergraduate, most of her classmates in the building and estate management faculty were male. But things appear to be changing, at least at the entry levels. In the office properties under the portfolio of Capital Commercial Trust, the property management teams have a balanced gender mix comprising females and males of roughly equal proportions. The healthy diversity in my team, comprising men and women of different backgrounds, uh, different expertise and uh, experiences, um, help in offering different views uh, whenever we have any, any problems. Uh, so we're able to offer better building specifications and also uh, richer customer experiences. Still, such gender diversity at the entry levels usually thins out rapidly when it comes to the top. In Singapore, less than 5% of CEOs or chairpersons of company boards are women. And out of every 100 board directors in listed companies, only 8 are women. Some say a key to improving female representation at the top is how employers treat their female staff, particularly during their childbearing years. At DBS Bank, over a third of its executive and management committees are women, and that's higher than the industry average. So how does DBS do it? We've created an ecosystem where I told you, so many senior women that women see role models and say, hey, if, you know, they can make it, so can I. So my view, and I know it's an unusual view, is I don't think it's a gender stereotype that women are all shy, docile and meek. But I think as a collective, the real issue is the 30s. And if companies can put in place an ecosystem, a culture, and a set of women-friendly policies to help them through that crucial five, seven, eight years, uh, I think women are quite happy to lean in. For DBS, it's not just about having women-friendly policies on paper. The bank says it's also about creating a culture where an employee that needs to take time off can do so without stigma or fear of losing seniority. The bank also says it actively encourages its senior women to participate in external boards. But DBS is the exception rather than the norm. Overall, Singapore still lags behind the likes of China, Malaysia and Indonesia when it comes to female representation on company boards. And there's clearly room for change, especially with research showing that there's real business value in having greater female input in corporate decision making. According to a report from NUS Business School, companies with new appointments of female directors outperform those without in terms of return on assets and return on equity. Some findings suggest the majority of Singapore companies remain unconvinced of the value of gender diversity. Earlier this year, a government-appointed task force found that only a third of firms agree that gender diversity at the board level is important. And given current rates of growth, the Diversity Task Force estimates women will hold 12% of directorships in 2020 and around 17% in 2030. The Singapore government has thrown its support behind the issue, appointing Singapore Exchange CEO Magnus Bocker to chair a committee to look into implementing recommendations from the task force. I've had the pleasure to work with so many phenomenally good women here in Singapore. So we have so many great candidates for the boards. But it's also important for us in this Diversity Action Committee to see to that we educate, that we support a lot more of the senior managers in the corporates to prepare them to step onto board seats. Mr. Bocker says that when compared to the West, Singapore companies have relatively short histories. This could mean that their boards may be dominated by older male directors who have yet to step down. The silver lining is, as boards undergo renewal, a new generation of women may take their place. While gender diversity may improve eventually, the question is, do companies need a nudge to quicken the pace? I think we, over time, need to be very clear to the companies listed with us. 
that if they have an unproportional amount of male board members, I think they need to come into a position where they need to explain. If they don't, I think they should comply with a much more diverse board. A quick and easy way to guarantee gender diversity on boards would be to impose gender quotas. This has been done in some countries and the European Commission is considering enforcing a 40% quota for female directors by 2020. But for now, the Singapore government has ruled this option out, saying that it will send the wrong signal. And most business leaders seem to agree. Let's return to the foundation on which Singapore was built upon, and that is meritocracy. Women should be appointed to boards and senior management only on the abilities, uh, experience and also the value that they can bring to the table and not just simply to tick off a box. So what is the Singapore solution to improving gender diversity? Among the recommendations being looked at, some key ones include getting companies to adopt a formal search and nomination process and reviewing reasons if a shortlist of director candidates does not include women. Training is another important area and this is where advocacy groups like Board Agenda can help. Board Agenda provides training to prepare qualified women across industries who are interested in taking on directorial duties. We have um, training um, conducted by the Singapore Institute of Directors. They've also worked with uh, SMU to have um, really a certification as well. Um, Board Agenda has um, done a few ad hoc training sessions just to give them um, really an introductory course on what it is to be a director, what it takes. Now to be sure, gender is just one dimension of diversity. There are many other aspects like age, race, religion, sexual orientation and physical ability. But gender diversity advocates say we have to start somewhere and perhaps we can begin by creating a more inclusive environment for half of the population.